<clears throat> because that is my favorite subject. Uh, I think there is some recording problem. Okay. I'm audible. Hello. I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes, Very sir. Much. You are audible. Okay. Thank you. So we started, you see, the moon mission once we were ready uh, with the technology. Then we thought, at least now we have al already have a control for remote sensing satellites. We have, I mean, uh, <clears throat> already explored our forests, properties, our animals, our farming, agriculture properties, etc. At the same time, we have already enhanced enough now our communication facilities, and we can explore now the space also. So we thought at least we should go to the, our nearest. <clears throat> celestial object uh, that is moon and so we formed some questions with some kind of a brainstorming session within the isro and we came that okay first of all we should address the question related to moon itself what is its origin <clears throat> what is the process of evolution uh, that moon had related to the sun also that interplanetary space whatever the particles wind which comes all the way from the sun and spreads all over the interplanetary space, but how it interacts with the moon. Related to earth, whether earth-moon relationship, moon came out of the earth or it was during the formation time itself, is, uh, it was a separate object. Then the major, in those days, in 2008, a major question was there that what we are planning to do what we will do, something new, because ISRO is known that we don't want to do repeated things. We always want to have some innovative things, whatever the limitations are there, but with uh, our those limitations, what we can contribute something new to the world. And so there was an idea that we should explore the water possibility of the water existence on the moon. And that was the main. But as I told that, as a function of time at every stage, there was always some kind of a resistance among the people, among the politicians, and of course, all over the world also, that why India, a developing country, should go to the moon, etc. Then in order to <clears throat> respond and to connect the people as well as politicians, we made a small video. Okay. And before that, I would like to say we shared with the politicians as well as to the people, people like me and as well as in us, all scientists went to the universities, schools and told that there is a deb debit of the moon, debit of the moon on the earth. And we should understand what is that debit? You know that at the time of the formation of the moon and earth, Almost even up to 2.5 <clears throat> billions of years, the moon was actually very, very close to the earth. Very close to the earth. And the daytime, that is what we have at the moment of 24 hours, it was hardly six hours a day. <clears throat> and because the moon was very close, so the, our this gravitational pull, and as a result, the tides were so much on the earth. So the oceans were always <clears throat> thundering, like uh, big, big uh, tsunami waves were being generated. And of almost of the 32 meters to the 100 meters of something like that. And as a result, and as a result, there was no evolution of life near the oceans. And until unless, the life is generated near the oceans. It is evolved over there. How I mean the <clears throat> bigger and bigger creatures will develop. But thanks to the God, thanks to the moon, who really played a real a role of a brother to the earth. As it, you know that the earth has very various kinds of motions that moving around the sun that is orbits around. And at every time, you might have heard about Milankovitch cycle, 
but every time there was a differential gravitational pull and as a result of that differential gravitational pull in order to balance the moon was moving away hardly 3 to 4 millimeters per year 3 to 4 millimeters per year and that was a, some kind of a debit that moon decided to move outside in the space and slowly slowly that in few millions of years when the moon was significantly away then the waves actually came down and slowly slowly microbes started to develop near the ocean in billions of years this life started to evolve near the oceans and then spread all over the earth in different forms including the dinosaurs just 65 million years back and after their death the new human society actually developed <clears throat> what we are talking today so as of now slowly slowly moving that that movement of the moon kept the moon at the, currently at the position of 3 lakhs and 84000 km away from the earth and still it does not mean that it is not moving now it is stationary still it is moving away from the earth. so starting from the 6 hours day currently we have 24 hours day and after maybe billion year we may have the 28 to 30 hours day also there is a possibility so what i wanted to say i we shared this story this scientific truth to the people who at least were literate and able to understand but in order to make understand the general public as well as politicians i told that we made a some kind of a movie starting from the beauty of the woman and we told that moon is compared in our the canonical texts as the beauty of the woman. and not only that we told that irrespective to race and religion caste and creed we always use the moon on the wherever the child is born irrespective to the race and religion caste and creed the moon is only used for the horoscopes so as soon as this movie was video became popular the parliament cleared the <clears throat> our proposal and we framed out the our science objective and the equipment payloads etc for the chandrayaan 1 mission which was launched you know that in the 2008 <clears throat> so there were terrain mapping camera was there and hyperspectral imager i mean many many instrument including the moon impact probe uh, by with the motivation of dr adul kalam and we introduced that almost you can say at the last moment but it was worked very well and then chandrayaan 1 uh, this x ray spectrometers were there both low energy and high energy and then infrared spectrometer was also there sub kv this uh, atomic uh, <coughs> i think analyzer that sara instrument was there then moon mineral mapper that is m cube was also there charged particle radiation dose monitor so with all these instruments the chandrayaan one was launched dear friends i would like to share with all of you a very important conclusion decision which was taken by the isro scientists and with the government of india at that time that we included the payloads of those countries also which refused at the time in the past even not to give a small point of technology no technology nothing but now they came to us and we told okay we will <coughs> i mean carry your instruments us 
So this is the greatness of our Indian tradition and culture. So you know that the moon impact drop, finally it was dropped from Chandrayaan, that orbiter mission. It was so managed very well that at precisely at the location where we wanted that it was, it dropped and particularly on day 14 November, the birthday of Pandit Nehru. And that place where it dropped, its name is now known as Jawaharasthal. And this instrument told us that there are some symptoms. There are symptoms of water and all other instruments should probe the water. It was not only that, but our terrain mapping camera, it actually really located, it located big, largest crater, largest crater of almost of the size you can say in November 15, a uh, few hundreds of kilometer, almost 170 kilometer wide that crater. <clears throat> the diameter itself was observed. That this crater actually, as well as terrain mapping camera, <clears throat> also discovered the uh, big tube that what we call in our India as a tunnel kind of thing. And that was a big discovery for future. I mean, what we want that human exploration or how we will protect them. So that tunnel can be used to save the humanity from the radiation, from the other kinds of uh, diverse conditions, et cetera, on the moon. So actually Chandrayaan one made big, big, I mean, discoveries, including the water. This is one instrument which I would like to say, of course, it came from USA. It is known as moon mapper, moon mineralogy mapper, and what we call it generally MQ. But this was orbiting as a function of the latitude of the moon from north to south and then south to north. And it made many kind of mineralogical uh, mapping, then temperature mapping, albedo mapping, and then uh, this uh, what uh, absorption, which was the most important part. Now, this whatever the different on the left side you see, the maps are of those different, uh, I mean, the <clears throat> instrument specifications in different wavelengths. If you know the spectroscopy, many of the students uh, are aware of that. Then what instrument did, not only that, but also that in moon impact prop, as well as in the other instruments also, the, when the spectroscopy was done, then we clearly found that there are, yes, symptoms of hydroxyl, that OH <coughs> atom, as well as the H2 also. So both I have shown in this as a function of wavelength, the intensity or the spectrum concentration. So you can see that this was a clear cut signature of the existence of water in one or the other form. Then there were other instruments which I told you, they for they found that, say, particularly Chase was the one instrument, they told that on the sunlit side, on the sunlit side of the moon's surface, below the few microns, there are signatures of the ice kind of a uh, system. And that I was also discovered and finally told that, yes, there is a, <coughs> a chance of the water. However, a clear cut that water is in the liquid form, solid form or in the gaseous form or in the ice, in the frozen, in the craters, et cetera, that was supposed to be done. And that is what the aim was of Chandrayanthi. Well, dear friends, in addition to that, the, as I told that the, there were a lot of, I mean, uh, <coughs> this craters, big, big craters were there. Some MSc student, Kushal Bhatt, one day he came to me and he told that, sir, can you give me some small project? work which I can do using this uh, uh, space-based data uh, because nowadays uh, that old data from which brought by the Apollo, et cetera, is old now, I want to. So I told, okay, because you are doing MSc, still MSc student, you may have very little time, but you can, what you can do, I gave him a formula and to calculate that based on the diameter of the crater, the depth of the crater, that was in something new that uh, based on the diameter, the depth of the crater, because there is a simple physics that diameter, K 
can give you the idea that this crater is caused by which kind of a material. I mean, generally it is asteroids, comets, meteorites, etc. But that meteorite or comet is made of which element? Say, for example, the iron or nickel or copper, or it is silicon based or the some uh, tungsten kind of things. So, as a function of density, the crater depth is generally known. So, if you know the depth of the crater, then now in the inverse way, you can find out that crater is composed of which the I mean density material. So this paper which he did and what he found is a scaling law. It was a wonderful. This paper is very, very popular <clears throat> in the whole world. He found that this uh, depth, whether it is north side of the uh, moon or it is a south side, but depth of this is directly proportional to the diameter. And he found that uh, on the latitudinal scale, the north, south, and at the equator, large number of craters are there, while on the longitude side, mostly the craters are at the, near the equator, at uh, the center of the moon. So this only I wanted to share for the students to motivate them that if you want, you can <clears throat> always do some good quality of work. Now this, uh, we came to the next Chandrayaan 2 then, and then it was thought that, okay, this time, in addition to the orbiter, we should land on the moon and on the moon at the site where there is a possibility, which was explored by Chandrayaan, that is the south side. And during the, I mean, where the, you know that the moon lunar day is of about 27 or 28 days. <clears throat> so 14 days day and 14 days night. And particularly there are many surfaces of the moon which never see the sun at all. The maximum part of the moon which observes the sun is only 54 to 55%. Rest of the moon remains only in the dark. So we wanted to go to the dark side, but as well as sometimes it can see the sun and that is in the south side where it was, I mean, possibility was explored that a lot of water should be there, oxygen we should observe and other <coughs> Uh, minerals, etc. So with all these things, the orbiter was planned as well as the Vikram lander was planned and the Pragyan rover was also planned. But you know that the Chandrayaan 2 orbiter is successful, still it is working and even my one student is working on the data to this X-ray spectroscopy of the sun, which is that is observed from the moon to the sun. And <laughs> then so that was a great motivation failure of uh, lander <coughs> of Chandrayaan 2 for the development of Chandrayaan 3. So Chandrayaan 3 basically is not a, I should say, a scientific satellite, but it was only technological mission. That is the failure part of Chandrayaan 2. I do not hesitate in telling anything. Uh, we should always accept our failure and we should learn from our failure and go ahead how to we, we can make that failure as a success. And that is what the whole story is Chandrayaan 3. So in Chandrayaan 3, basically, we want to, to demonstrate only the safe and soft landing on the lunar surface, but at a particular place near the south side. And <clears throat> to demonstrate that the rover comes out from the uh, this lander and then it rolls on the surface, at our desired location, and then it does the scientific experiment. So, so far, you know that the, there were some payloads on the lander. So, these are the payloads on the lander. <clears throat> there are many, many Langmuir probe and uh, many other, uh, I mean, instruments to take the photographs, etc. Uh, I would like to mention here that, in fact, nobody in the world nobody, no scientist in the world was aware that there will be such a, I mean, extreme temperature gradient will be there. And even particularly on the southern side, where the most of the time also at 50% time, the night is there. And that is what the temperature has been observed by the chastity, that the temperature gradients are very intense. 
just in few microns to millimeter below the surface it is minus side to the plus side i mean it is almost more than 100 degrees centigrade so this was the first kind of an information and this information is so precious so important for the future planning of our habitation on the moon etc at such temperature gradients will be always dangerous then similarly there were many other i will just briefly tell these are the instruments and then there were two instruments on the rover and one instrument was on the propulsion module which from where this lander got separated so we made actually use of chandrayaan 2 cameras also to see continuously the tracking of this lander l as well as the propulsion module also we used its very perfect i mean potentiality to map the things as well as what we can do in the future uh, related to the i mean the smaller planets are existing over there say for example i told that the lots of craters are being the moon is always impacted by the uh, meteorites comets and other asteroids etc so which one may be the more safer site keeping in mind that what we published the paper also and what are the i mean areas <clears throat> what are the areas where we can find the i mean precious uh, elements etc so what i can say that i think uh, this was the move oh sorry that when the rover actually came out from the lander successfully this was a great great actually movement a matter of pride for all of us that everything worked very successfully can see okay basically <clears throat> i think you all might be having questions in mind so finally why we want to go to the moon even as on today you may ask some question and the basic question is uh, related to not only the instrumentation development or only show the, our technology power but keeping in mind that <clears throat> whether can we use moon please underline my this sentence can we use moon in the future to i mean for launching the, our satellites from the lunar surface itself can we learn from them because that will be less expensive and can we explore from that distant planets etc celestial objects on the other hand industrial people they want to exploit the helium if it is possible because helium is a big energy source and transportation capabilities building houses and then the human civilization some people want to go as a tourism they want to make the moon as a tourist place over there so lot of things are there and people also want to do that whether small i mean that what is still others see the moon as a potential site as a home for the humanity but is it possible in next 50 years even so recently the isro made our 50 year the plan that is the plan map road map for the next 50 years in which our new missions to the venus and mars are also in the pipeline anyway what has been done by the chandrayaan 1 and chandrayaan 2 and that was some kind of a water map and you can see in this picture that on the right side all the blue dots what you see that is of few hundreds of kilometer each one is the pixels that is the moon 
mineralogy mapper and other instruments which made the water is there so lots of water you can see over there if water is there then why we are not able to discover so far that may be the big question oxygen has already been discovered hydrogen should have been discovered but the other instruments not only indian instruments but by the other instruments of the other countries have also discovered the signatures of the presence of h2o that is a molecule oh also iron as well as atom also so lot of water is there but there are, must be it means some scientists at nasa as well as the like person like me also they say that if there is a water below the surface in the sub surface of this lunar surface at the i mean uh, <clears throat> south pole as well as the sunlit site means always when ever there is a water signatures of water exist means some virus some microbes should always be there and once this life exists over there then only you can expect the evolution of life in the future also that same story as the earth also had in the very beginning so i think this is the right time now to advocate to recommend to the isro uh, and isro must take now the space biology astro biology as a new now features uh, new subjects for exploration of life uh, in the space already isro has started the space biology program and but not only for the moon in the beginning but for the other the <clears throat> planets what we call as a habitat planets uh, in uh, our uh, this whole galaxies and other places etc anyway so this may be the one new program now so far the chandrayaan 3 already has discovered the this uh, on the south pole side already that some temperature problem that which i told as a temperature gradient problem then the sulfur discovery of sulfur was confirmed on the moon south pole uh, south pole and that is very very good symptom uh, that yes other elements not only the precious elements but the life saving elements are there and the list of the elements which have been discovered so far by chandrayaan 3 uh, by the rover both the payloads i have listed down also now vibrations have been observed and that says that small minor earthquakes are also exist on the moon so that is another kind of a living uh, i should say the moon is living uh, in planet then we have a plasma environment that is what solar wind is coming from the sun and that can be also uh, sensed over there okay so with all these things what i would like to say uh, and of this first part of my talk uh, today i have taken i think more than half an hour or so now i will go to the next uh, uh, mission aditya l1 mission and uh, i hope uh, all students and everybody will appreciate this uh, uh, effort of this so before i just say few words about the sun and that i would like to share a video uh, of the sun with the real observations from the solar and heliophysical observatory the soho mission and you would like to uh, appreciate that this is the some kind of a location taken by the satellite at the new york times uh, times square in the usa and from there now we are sitting you just imagine that we are sitting in a satellite and we are moving up 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 in above the surface of the earth so this is whole our earth you can see the blue side of the <clears throat> earth which are the oceans you can see the other greens forests etc you can see the clouds and all that so this is the real picture of the earth and you always know that the moon goes around the earth and and when the moon when the moon comes with in front of the sun in front of the sun then always total solar eclipse takes place so this was the eclipse and i would like to have your kind attention dear friends to see these are the real images of the sun which have been animated and you can see the real face in the helium 
line as well as in hydrogen line so these all bright bright areas are the high temperature active region the sun has the splitted the sun spots which are the magnetic field regions and so connecting these are the bright loops can you see the lines of forces filled up with the plasma connecting from north to south and i would like to have your kind attention your kind attention at this place where you can see the high temperature fluid that plasma so basically the sun is uh, you can see that this looks like a some kind of a fireball really it is a fireball because at the center of this sun is 15 million degree k that much high temperature is there and as usual it is also a star and all stars have the fundamental element as a hydrogen so at this high temperature this hydrogen is being converted into the helium that is a thermonuclear fusion reactions because 15 million degree k temperature is there so from there at this height at this high temperature once the nuclear reactions are set up then the gamma ray photons and other neutrinos etc they release and they come outside now you know that the high energy photons they interact with the nearby or existing material or plasma that is because at this high temperature everything is plasma so that is ionized gas and they interact and they lose their energy and give their main energy to the next photon that is next material so it is a continuous reaction and energy transformation is there and at every transformation the <clears throat> radiation is there so that level that all these photons travel that is known as radiative zone once that energy of through the radiation it is finished but still heat is there and that heat is being transported like what we boil the water that is in the form of the convection and so convective bubbles are there that and that heat is transformed from the bottom of the convection zone to the top level so that whole zone is known as convection and at the top of the convection zone it is known as photosphere a few hundreds of kilometers thick and that is the photosphere that is the actually sun what we see in the sky so what we see in the sky that sun is the photosphere and not the inside the internal story that whole atmosphere inside they are different and outside atmospheres are different so above photosphere basically another actually uh, colorful uh, atmosphere is there that is known as chromosphere and above that whatever you see here that is corona so sun is actually a multifaceted uh, star where you can see all this phenomena you can say it is a cosmic laboratory you can say that it is a rosetta stone laboratory it gives so many important it is a mathematical laboratory it is a plasma laboratory uh, it is a physics laboratory etc and it gives so much immense of information to us but sun has a very different story sun is not a solid and sun does not rotate as a result uh, in a solid form uh, just like earth does in 24 hours it rotates but rather the sun basically the rotates the sun rotates uh, as a function of latitude so at the center the sun rotates on this equator around the 25 days but at the function of latitude it moves slower and slower so at the higher latitude say let us say 50 or 60 degree it rotates in 30 days and even at the 90 degree that is at the poles it rotates almost in 36 days so as a function of this rotation of the sun as a function of latitude is known as the differential rotation it is not a solid rotation differential rotation now i told you few seconds before that the whole heat is coming from the binit that is from the convection so convective flow is coming from the binit and then the rotation is different so that whole heat is distributed as a function of from the north to south number 1 number 2 because it is a plasma all the way right from the core 
do the even up to the corona but what we can see because it is a whole electric body and as a result so the magnetic field at the perpendicular side is uh, produced so it means this rotate differential rotation that convective flows both generate the magnetic field that north and south of the sun and this what happens i don't know whether you can see to me or not but can you see this rubber band in my hand can you see rubber band in my hand is it okay can you see rubber band <coughs> Yes sir. yes sir yes yes sir okay very wonderful uh, just i want to demonstrate how the things happen how this magnetic fields are generated small small from the poloidal magnetic field of north and south you can see that the sun rotates like this and as i told at the equator it is always faster so in first rotation i have done can you see in the first rotation itself there is a note on the one on the north south and the one in the south can you see that yes Yes, and, sir. And then the second rotation, the second note is there in the third rotation, but the notes are coming down towards the equator, not going up. So at the and these notes, what is the, what are these notes? These notes are nothing but the magnetic flux. That is number of lines of force per unit area when they <clears throat> are formed in such a way that magnetic flux becomes stronger and stronger than it is splits up it is splits up from the main what line of force that is north to south extending from north to south and that split up part is nothing but they are known as the dark sun spots so this whatever you see this over here the sun spots they are the dark sun spots now there is a temperature story that from the center i told that 15 million degree k temperature and it comes down all the way all the way you can see that where in this picture temperature is written and there is a there is a level or layer above the photosphere and below the chromosphere which we call as a temperature minimum condition where the temperature is hardly 5800 the temperature at the photosphere is about 6000 while inside in the radiative zone etc it is a millions of degree and few thousands of degree but unfortunately the what we see that the temperature from the core center of the sun it is continuously coming down to the temperature minimum that from million degree to the only 5800 degree but i would like to have your friends your kind attention that the change in the profile of the temperature that as we go above and above the that is outside of the sun the temperature is further increasing it increases to almost 10000 to 100000 in chromosphere and even in transition region that is the transformation the layer between the chromosphere and the corona it becomes of almost 1 million degree and surprisingly surprisingly in the corona it becomes even the 500 i mean almost 5 lakhs even to the few millions of k so this is a still a mystery it means there should have been a some kind of a understanding to improve our understanding the process what is the physical process what is the mechanism of increase of this temperature suddenly outside where there is radiative force is there gravitational force already almost by and large finished and now there is no another mechanism which can enhance the temperature so what are those mechanism so aditya aditya mission is basically also will address this important question this is which is a mystery so far and similarly and on the other hand in contradiction to the this temperature enhancement the density as well as the pressure they are coming down con continuously they are coming down so the chances from that physics point of view that is the equation of state it was very difficult but there it means something is happening inside either in the corona or at the chromospheric level or at the photospheric level that radiation is continuously coming and that enhances at a certain distance this temperature anyway i told you that about this story of the formation of the sun spots now this sun spots even a small sun spot is of the size of the earth just remember because on the diameter of the sun on the diameter of the sun you can accommodate 109 earths only on the diameter of the sun but if you consider dear students you just consider that the 
sun is a spherical football okay and if you you are able to drop the earth inside then you can accommodate 1.3 million earth inside that football so sun is by volumetric way measurement it is 13 lakhs times to the uh, earth so i mean there was a time when the sun was little smaller at that time on the diameter the earths were being accommodated 108 earths aapko pata bhi hoga hamare jo mala ginne ki hoti hai usme 108 manka hota hai uske andar the bits are there and uh, this sun spots you see they have the umbra inside the where the strong magnetic field is there outside when it comes then it is a penumbra every sun spot by and large has northern polarity and southern polarity there are independent also polarity regions ports and small satellites and spots are there was one student long back shwebe and he calculated the number of uh, earths i mean sun spots and as a function of time their variation and he found that there is a 11 year sun spot cycle is there and that 11 year sun spot cycle known as shwebe cycle and over the last two after the advent of the telescope with galileo uh, <coughs> is number of sun spots now are being measured and last from 1750 uh, more than 200 years now very well i mean managed and have been uh, counted and it was demonstrated that the uh, sun has a uh, cycle of 11 years now in addition to the 80 year and that 11 year cycle 80 and 200 year cycle glazeberg cycle my one student who did phd professor nipa but now his professor she found that this two cycles 80 years and 200 year cycle they are related to the uh, i mean impact on the earth that is related to the our climate and our earthquakes or volcanoes and many many effects related but du- during the last 20 years another important uh, one feature which was uh, discovered that you can see just on the my right side plot that the sun is losing its this dipole magnetic field strength and this is a big mystery again and so in order to understand what whether it is real or it is only for a time being and what we call all this 11 year cycle we have given numbers so last three cycles four cycles cycle 21 22 23 and the last cycle was 24 and the currently cycle 25 is in progress so it is only periodic phenomena or it is sun is really losing so sun is as a star sun as a star now some changes are going on or not so all those things are important to address so we wanted to have a continuous 24 hours observations of the sun so we chose this uh, lagrangian point l1 for the aditi on the other hand as i told that nipa what she discovered based on the last sun spot cycles and the phenomena took place that when there were there were gaps and this 11 year sun spot cycle lost its cyclicity that is the no sun spots were visible for almost not for 50 years or even for hundreds of years then at that time the earth actually faced the snow ice age you can say big ice age little ice age etc and now we see on the other hand the global warming although it is a real global warming or not uh, we don't know because 0.5 degree is not a significant warming so what we have so there was a question there was a big question in last 100 year that whether it is the sun which is culprit or it is somebody else is the culprit what we have from the sun is radiation and that is irradiance from the sun is known as total solar irradiance tsi on the other hand what we receive on the earth is galactic cosmic rays and you galactic cosmic rays are of very very high energy and many a times even they reach all the way up to the surface of the earth and even to the oceans why and they their footprints we can find also it was discovered just to 40 years back that the galactic cosmic rays play a significant role in the formation of the clouds also and they change the atmospheric chemistry so now there are two potential candidates one is the total solar irradiance the other is the galactic cosmic rays you would like to see that 
whenever the sun spots are very very high in number what we call as a sun spot maximum time or sun spot maximum year so whenever the sun spots are very high on the sun then the magnetic field of the sun is on the higher side and as a result of that the magnetic field around the whole sun that is the heliosphere what we call the heliosphere is also of the strong magnetic field now the galactic cosmic rays that whole war that river which flows from the galaxies all that high charge particles including the muons etc gamma rays and all that but they are stopped by that magnetic field because we know that the charged particles cannot flow cannot penetrate inside the strong magnetic fields so at that time it means the galactic cosmic ray strength or their flux is at the minimum side but however on the other side when the sun spots are at the minimum side that is at the 11 year cycle they will come to the minimum side up. at that time the heliosphere becomes weak and at that time galactic cosmic rays penetrate all the way down to the earth even to the oceans and even in the surface where the silica is there so what happens at that time you can we can we could demonstrate also by the mo <coughs> neutron monitors measurement of the cosmic rays as well as on the other hand the sun spot cycles the top is the sun spot cycle in different sun spot cycles and at the bottom you can see that the variation of the galactic cosmic rays you can immediately see that both are actually opposite in nature to each other that is whenever the sun spots are at high level maximum level the galactic cosmic rays are at minimum level and similarly it means they are inversely proportional to each other and this has been now very well established it means there should be some effects on the earth by the sun spots while at the other times the spot influences on the earth should be governed or controlled by the galactic cosmic rays flux however still i mean we have to understand the influences by the galactic cosmic rays as much we have understood better the about the total solar irradiance you can see here what i am showing a very important result which has been demonstrated that the sun spot cycle is almost and on the other hand the sea level <clears throat> the sea level is varying in few millimeters of course but it is because that is in few millimeter also makes the large volumes of uh, water and it is in tune with the sun spot it means whenever the sun spots numbers are very very large it at that time the sun the sea level rise also is there so this is one signatures of the sun a plasma body or a radiative body has been observed in the oceans that is in the hydrosphere <clears throat> on the other hand below the earth from where the, what we see as a result of uh, tectonic plates the earthquake comes now one is the space that sun radiation coming from the space but the this thing is from the beneath almost 50 kilometers to 100 kilometer or even up to 1 kilometer the earthquake comes but it has been observed and my one student sneha she is doing work uh, considering the earthquakes and all these radiative forces uh, which are visible uh, related to earthquakes as well as volcanoes and but preliminary she found that the, all the big earthquakes on the reactor scale of more than 5 they actually take place when the sun spot are on the minimum sides that is when the sun is at the minimum it means who is responsible it means total solar irradiance <coughs> is not significant it means either the galactic cosmic rays they are responsible <coughs> or something else <coughs> because the earthquakes and volcanoes are basically considered as a result of the collision of the tectonic plates or they are moving away from the uh, their location and the friction force which becomes the slower down so we have to understand that physical mechanism if it is how the galactic cosmic rays if responsible then how they can reduce the friction whether eddy currents in the atmosphere as well as in the sigma uh, that is the uh, muons in the soil which is the i mean very soft soil like sand etc uh, they are responsible over there 
but no clear cut understand is there similarly you can see the sunspot cycle in the red and at the bottom close to the sunspot minimum the all and volcanoes we have understood little in a better way that they are occurring near the sunspot minimum site the you'll have seen we have already noticed i mean in last 50 to 60 years the increase in the natural disasters and what we have seen on the other hand the large sunspots are also coming down and down down and down slowly slowly in last three decades so what is the real sun he wants to show us uh, whether in the future the sunspots will be at the low side uh, maybe temporarily they are keep on coming and going down but as i mean longer trend they are keeping coming down on the other hand my student who is has finished his research work and uh, submitting his thesis now in this year we studied the oceans in the gujarat you know that the gujarat is only the state which is largely covered by the oceans it's a three fourth area is actually <clears throat> the boundary is of uh, covered by the oceans and so we studied all the oceans particularly i am showing here only the one very important result that the sea level is continuously increasing and there was a chokri village in khambaki khadi <coughs> there was a kambe that in the indian ocean or what we call as arabian ocean also and the last 40 years of uh, more than 40 years data from the landsat us satellite data and we he analyzed the remote sensing data and we found that the uh, one small village that the, almost the water has come and very close and many many small small islands which were there they already submerged inside it means all these things but when they took place when i was doing work and i was invited from udaipur to the prl physical research laboratory back to undertake i mean the instrumentation to develop some kind of a uh, instrument uh, for the after the good command on the our rockets and the when india decided to launch the satellite so i told that okay and uh, dr abdul kalam gave his blessings and i told that we would like to go for solar x ray spectrometer sox mission on the gsat 2 which was supposed to be launched in 2003 uh, professor seema asked me to share at least one more story or something some story i would like to say madam that i decided at that time as a principal investigator to fly the two important the new generation detectors silicon detectors and cadmium zinc telluride detector which were never flown in the space by any country by any country and i thought i will anyway people denied also but i thought okay i will take the risk to fly but unfortunately in 1998 after when uh, dr uh, our uh, atal bihari vajpayee saw he was prime minister and there was a nuclear explosion and india came under sanctions and nobody wanted to give the sensor detectors to us, to India. Then uh, it was only our president, Dr. Abdul Kalam, who was not president at that time. He was a defense chief secretary. And he motivated to build the whole payload, including the detector development, et cetera, in the physical research laboratory. And we did that. And on time, we launched our satellite. These are the just to show to the student and motivate them if you have zeal, <clears throat> then you can always make a very small miniature kind of a payloads, detectors payload. I have put up the pan over here just to show you the measurement of the whole detector payload. The small collimator which you can see here is the silicon pin detector. The longer one is the cadmium zinc telluride detector. These detectors were flown, however, packed in the hermetical <coughs> T8 package, and the electronics was made in such a way that these detectors field of view always see the sun even because it was on gsat uh, that geosynchronous orbit at 36000 km it was launched perfectly and precisely great achievement sir fabulous <laughs> So it was uh, precisely and perfectly launched also. It was orbited. And I'm proud to say this was the 
first sol space bound solar astronomy experiment of india and uh, yeah. and you can see that what we observed in the high energy site i would like to a similar kind of soho which images which i showed these are the sun spots and covering the disk of the sun we can see that in extreme ultraviolet x rays the explosions on the sun the coronal mass ejections what the blasting bomb blast takes place and basically the main objective was when scientists our dr kasturi rangan and professor you are asked what exactly rajmal you want to do i told that we want to discover sir as per the tradition of isro something new on the sun what i told iron and presence of iron and nickel how you will do and this is the way that <clears throat> the x ray our payload showed as a function of time you can see the <clears throat> intensity these are the time profiles different colors are in different energy but this was the basically a spectrometer sox and it was working in 256 different energy channels 256 energy channel i would like to motivate the students that this every picture was that is spectra was being made in 100 milliseconds so 256 observations in 100 milliseconds the instrument electronics was so fast and everybody became happy <laughs> when the instrument discovered at the time of the explosion at the at the time of the high temperature in the solar corona the iron at the 5.8 kv and the nickel line near around the 7.9 kv you can see at the bottom this thing that the intensity as a function of the energy that is known as the spectrogram spectrum and as a result of recognition of this i was invited by the royal astronomical society with the <coughs> nomination by the top people and i received the fellowship of royal astronomical <coughs> society in 2014 so this are the really uh, some kind of thing there were many questions left over at that time because this was the only one payload thing so it was decided by professor u r rao that okay now india must go for a dedicated uh, mission to the sun now there was a question that a uh, dedicated means all the instrument should see 24 hours sun and that was the point lagrangian point i will explain a little later so there were many many instruments which have been planned you can see that the velc that visible emission line coronagraph <coughs> so we wanted to see that the really coronal ejection or the lines of force which are extending outside i showed in the video in the beginning those lines of force how they evolve outside so that emission line coronagraph will see then the ultraviolet imaging telescope will see even the below the photosphere also and see the small small those bright things which are the potential sites for the coronal heating the chemistry which i told and small micro flares etc and then theoretically we can do even magneto hydrodynamics and similarly we can measure the magnetic field but this time because at that time before my retirement only this was planned and i was asked rajmal can you contribute some instrument so i had proposed the swatis swatis means solar wind and <clears throat> supra thermal this uh, ion spectrometer this time i wanted to make use of different instrument and as well as the silicon detector for the particle detection so this later on after my retirement it took the even the little change in the format and currently my colleague professor dibendu chakravarti he is the in charge project director of this aspex director its name has been changed and so many instruments are there including my one colleague uh, <coughs> dr satish thampi at uh, vikram saravai space science center that space physics laboratory and he made that uh, plasma analyzer Uh, for the particles aditya that papa instrument <clears throat> these are the various instruments and various institutes which are involved you can see the highlight in the yellow color and blue color are uh, basically where we actually got involved and <clears throat> the proposal was formed <coughs> sorry 
now this instrument we will see the how the, all the instruments will work sometimes in january and i will get back to you in january when the instruments are working and we get large sample of data what is the lagrangian and why we want to go to the lagrangian point so you can see the sun here and you can see that <clears throat> the earth actually here is orbiting around the sun in elliptical form and this ellipticity of the earth does not remain the same and same that is what i want to say eccentricity of this elliptical orbit is keep on changing at every 100000 years now within a given time of frame of few tens of years we need not to worry and the near this between the earth and the sun there is a line and at that line in between that there is a point and similarly if you go at different positions of the earth in the orbit elliptical orbit you will come across the similar kind of points in the straight line now a point now a point where the gravitational force of the sun as well as the earth at that given location in that straight line becomes almost equal you can say close to the equal so the what a small body because sun is a very heavy body i told you especially that 1.3 million times and earth is also a significantly large relative to the satellite mass okay so the satellite will move in a some kind of a halo uh, orbit over there and that point where this gravitation pulls are balanced so if you see from that within that halo small orbit or elliptical orbit you can say uh, then you will be able to see continuously the sun 24 hours and those that point such points are known as the lagrangian lagrangian was a big physicist theoretical physicist who did celestial mechanics and he discovered such five points at least around the earth and generally l1 is used to observe the sun and similarly l2 point is observed to see the celestial objects like stars galaxies etc on the other side l3 is on the other hand is the other side of the sun so if you want to see at a given time on the other side that is back side of the sun and predict in next 14 15 days what will happen on the sun then you can use l3 also orbit so similarly all these uh, di different lagrangian points have different importance for uh, observation in the space and you gave me big opportunity thank you very much professor sima the uh, this uh, what uh, rc1 thank you very much executive committee and i say express my thank you very much to all of you it is now time for your questions thank you sir extremely thank good so talk much, i mean <laughs> over to poonam yes ma'am you were saying something actually i am to just mesmerize with the, his talk and the inputs he has given it's uh, he has given us the way forward to do small projects uh, with regard to like crater height and depth and density and all these thing matters so we'll share your uh, expertise sir in some of the projects that we'll do with the school children and a college teachers and uh, thanks so much it was par excellence thank you so much uh, yeah over to you puna thank you thank you so much sir for your activity it is indeed a prestige to listen to your experience and knowledge thank you so much for a wonderful and insightful lecture sir we are much obliged for sharing your insights and for endowing the young learners with your words of perception now uh, the session is open for the questions and i would like to take permission from you to conduct the question answer session sir yeah i am ready okay thank you sir so first question in the chat box uh, is by professor hk sejwani he is very active member of iapt rc1 uh, he just wanted to ask how do we ensure that during its journey to moon there will be no meteoroid which may hit chandrayaan oh, oh oh okay because the speed of this chandrayaan the rocket when it goes and uh, the mission goes it is so fast and whatever the i mean in the atmosphere earth's atmosphere 
the small or even even the bigger this crashed down almost become ash now only that possibility which you are asking is when the satellite chandrayaan mission is close to the moon only that is within the lunar orbit kind of thing so lunar that our chandrayaan 1 also did work very well chandrayaan 2 is orbitary is still working but the meteorites which are falling is of that uh, not of that size that which can hit and on the other hand we already on the earth already on the earth we are have a control power to do that and you might have heard the term language maneuvers when we change the orbit etc to reach to the moon etc and similarly the last maneuver you might have heard for the aditya mission when it left the earth <coughs> so we try to protect from that side also we know the showers of the i mean this meteorites and comets are always visible uh, the other thing important question part of your the when the moon is there i mean on the surface of the moon so there is no gravitational pull there is no atmosphere so the major risk is on the moon itself that is on the surface just like our chandrayaan 3 that lander and rover they may get hit they may get hit from this meteorites etc because there is no atmosphere to stop them so large number of craters are being actually <clears throat> made by those meteorites and so they may hit so we may have put them at such a site i showed that the student has discovered you no know, the locations where the craters are very very less i'm i'm audible yes sir okay. yes sir you are yes okay thank you sir for the answer okay. next question okay. is by thank dr rachna kumar you. and uh, the question is can you please tell us some key areas of research to which data fetch will be used i i i did not listen your question i think something yeah. you did uh, on the uh, okay i think uh, yeah i just made ha huh? because yeah, in my yeah. laptop no problem sir no problem i don't know anyway i i am audible right yes sir you are audible so some uh, new windows are coming okay so can you repeat the question yes Rachana, sir please yes sir the question is uh, whatever data is fetched by the isro or the nasa can what is the key research area about that matlab what where we can use that data okay you can uh, go to the isro site okay isro.gov.in and for particular given mission you can study you can write even simply on the internet also chandrayaan 2 chandrayaan 3 adit you will find a lot of science objectives over there you will see and if still if you need if you don't find don't worry i am there i can send you the do document itself <laughs> okay what are the science objectives what are the physics gray areas etc uh but uh, the data should be availability availability of the data is more important and for that from your university side uh, you have to write to the isro uh, and get the data uh, generally there are many many opportunities for the universities and university students by the isro okay so my students in different universities etc they are also getting the project funded by the isro it should be competent i i'm sure delhi university is also very competent i was under impression that you are already in tune with this anyway so there are there is no i mean uh, issue related to the scientific objectives science physics issues as well as data issues only you have to do little hard work <coughs> to get approval and get the data yeah next yes, question yeah the next question is by dr vansh uh can you please discuss about how the lander of chandrayaan 3 changed its position after landing once as video published by isro is this given in, is this gives information about the atmosphere present in moon 
no no it was you see i told just now in the response to professor bijwani he asked the relay you see i told the word manures so we can do still and a power is if we have to use so we can little bit now uh, not as orbit when it was in the air uh, but we can change its position of the lander as well as to the rover also you might have also seen the video that we changed the position of the rover also we stopped it because it was going to fall into a crater okay yes we we can always do from here on the earth india has become very powerful country in the world you see we are we are flying the payloads instrument of other countries not only one 104 satellites were launched by this country only india in one rocket you yeah. see that is also history wonderful yes sir wonderful okay. uh, so next question is by dr yogesh kumar he just wanted to ask can the student of university of delhi can do some minor project under your guidance uh, i i should have time <laughs> only i told that i may visit <laughs> one or two times only uh, i am very very i mean similar like delhi university i have request from many many universities okay and uh, I, but i always continuously i always get associated and i will uh, try to share something with uh, we did uh, with the madhya pradesh you see uh, one project uh, i think riva riva university of riva avdesh pratap singh university then in bhopal also and because we started our isro when remote sensing with the farms agriculture from uh, the very poor weaker area of tribal areas so we still have focus on all developing states and uh, i mean there is no i mean uh, issue uh, i i can give some projects to delhi university student delhi university has many colleges i believe hansraj college and uh, there are many colleges right yes sir Under yes sir yeah, i think so dr yes, kumar is from the hansraj college Professor Sima yeah. is from the Hansa Hansraj. No, Motil, sir, I am from Motilal Nehru. Motilal Nehru University, uh, yeah, Motilal Nehru yeah. College also is there. Right, right. Yeah, then, and there are about hundred uh, colleges in uh, yeah, yeah. Delhi University. Uh, Arbindo, Arbindo was also there, no? Ah, uh, Poonam yes, Jain is from. Sir, Poonam is from, from Arbindo oh, okay. College. Poonam is from Arbindo because yeah. I visited some colleges uh, <laughs> back some forty years back. So, okay, okay. so it would be very nice if you can suggest some of the projects for us so can uh, so that we can work with our student and we can seek your guidance under that uh, oh. also sir uh, dr yamuna shekhar is also want can you please mention some of the research pro projects for the school children which they can carry out they can make the telescope itself you see first of all <laughs> okay they can they should be able, you see it is a hands on experience हैंड्स ऑन एक्सपीरियंस एंड देयर शुड बी लिबर्टी बच्चे तोड़ते हैं तो उनको पहले तो तोड़ने दीजिए अलाउ देम यू सी हमने सारे हमने रॉकेट तभी बनाए जब सारे रॉकेट हम हमारे रॉकेट गिर जाते आज आज दुनिया में सबसे बड़ा नाम है तो हमने रॉकेट और दूसरी चीजें फेल्योर से हमने वी लर्न ए लॉट फ्रॉम आवर फेल्योर मेरी एक रिक्वेस्ट है सर एंड एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू सी विदाउट विदाउट एनी फैसिलिटीज विदाउट रोड एज आई टोल्ड इन द बिगिनिंग एंड विद सो मेनी प्रॉब्लम एंड विद अ वेरी लो सैलरी ऑल्सो एंड वी कुड डू दैट Yes, sir. The, so the next question is by Dr. Krishna Saha. Uh, sir, she is saying, as we know, the lander has been in a half sleep stage since a month now. Is it possible by any means to totally eliminate the sleep stage and still manage to work properly? No, no. We we did yesterday only. Since last three days we are doing, but yesterday <coughs> we did lot of efforts. but you see the batteries which are nickel cadmium batteries okay they reserve they store the i mean this power for some days but whatever the batteries which were planned we thought that they will work for 15 to 20 days etc 
and in order to save their power the lander as well as rover were kept in the slip pool they were put up in that so that minimum discharging will be there and now the sun has already come from 19 or 20th i think okay 20th of uh, this month and since last 3 days we have been trying uh, isro information as far as i know yesterday was uh, that still i mean we have to do so we have to wait we have to wait for a one or two days more i think once the battery is charged appropriately they will come into the action okay let us not get disappointed so <laughs> <laughs> yes sir so the yes. next question is by mr soryadeep lenka he is asking how does the coronal mass injection from the sun affect our earth yes in two ways because there are two phenomena one is the flare the other is the coronal mass ejection so the two things come out from this one is the radiation radiation of the order of a few kv to the mev site okay that is very high energy radiations so high energy radiation generally change the atmospheric chemistry they don't penetrate all the way down because atmosphere itself absorbs about this uh, 20 km or something like that. but the other material which is the charged plasma material that comes that comes all the way to the earth okay and earth has a magnetic field earth has a magnetic field that is known as the geomagnetic field and it's uh, geomagnetic field lines of force they are connected from north and south but the because of the rotation and the wind pressure solar wind plasma that pressure they are elongated toward the night side and uh, on this uh, left side that is toward the sun they are compressed now when the coronal mass ejections that plasma comes all the way toward the earth as well as to other planets also in the interplanetary space but directed toward the earth it compresses it compresses the lines of force and the charged particles while rotation they go on the tail side that is the night side and then they enter into the poles north pole south pole and the auroras that are produced what you call say northern light southern light or blue color orange color but we don't see on uh, in the india because we are near to the equator but you can see in the european countries all this i have seen when i was working at picdu media observatory in france Uh, at high latitude you can see all this so that is one kind of phenomena but there are many other uh, effects are there say this uh, potential current is generated in the atmosphere okay electricity blackouts etc also take place so uh, then the climate change is always takes place so there are many many effects by this uh, so that is what we call as solar influences uh, on the earth i have published one uh, paper uh, if you want i can send to you so yes. um, probably this is the last question uh, by dr yamuna shekhar can you please elaborate a bit about the eddy currents effect on earth during the minimum sunspot activity and occurrence of earthquakes uh, well uh, at the moment as i told at during my talk itself not a better understanding is there very well but i what i can say that uh, this eddy currents are generated when this galactic cosmic rays high energy charged particles particularly muons or something like of that energy when they collide near the silicas that is a, a very soft i mean uh, soil is there or the soft soil etc and what happens that large potential is generated big voltage not million electron volt tera electron volts okay we don't know but that is propagated along the lines of force down and whatever the friction forces that is to stop the earthquakes and volcanoes that is tectonic plates which are there and when they move but now the frictions which is already there to stop them or to stop i mean slowly this fact that friction is actually uh, affected so the friction is what i should say friction force is reduced 
now once the friction force is reduced then the tectonic plates become active with it so the earthquakes come this is what the preliminary understanding which has been uh, generated over the world i have not done any work on this physics part but this is what i read that uh, this might be the one possible this is the ad currents but when i'm saying when the galactic cosmic rays reach that is already known galactic cosmic rays reach all the way down not only even to the surface but even down to the oceans also but the eddy currents also may uh, take place in the atmosphere itself also so what where is the catch what is the real mechanism still many secrets are there we have to do lot of work okay <clears throat> if uh, uh, who is the questioner kya naam bataya yashoda yamuna shekhar yamuna shekhar if she is theoretician if she has good theoretical background then she can do that kind of work also sir yeah. uh, on the behalf of uh, the whole audience this is my question uh, does india plan to send a manned mission to the moon in future yes not to the moon uh, but in in the space of course that is what that already project is underway yes okay. man first robotic and then the man okay okay thank you so much sir uh, beside thank the questions i can see you. a lot of uh, remarkable appreciation in the chat box very informative lecture the it is very inspirable for the young generation very good talk we have enjoyed listening to you a lot of appreciation i must say uh, not on only on the zoom we have received a lot of appreciation in the youtube chat box as well so uh, thank you so much sir for sparing your valuable time and enlightening our virtual audience with the insightful lecture very soon in the near future we will have you in the physical mode with our audience now without further ado i would like to request dr yogesh kumar the secretary ieft rc1 for proposing vote of thanks to you as well as to our uh, participants over to you sir Uh, thank you, uh, Poonam Ma'am, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. I, Yogesh Kumar, Secretary IAPT RC1 and Faculty at at Hansraj College, honoured to have a opportunity to give a vote of thanks on this event. Today, I take the opportunity to put all my gratitude into words. On the behalf of entire IAPT RC1, I extend my hearty vote of thanks to the eminent speaker, Professor Rajmal Jain, sir. for taking out his precious time to deliver such a wonderful and informative session on chandrayaan 3 and aditya l1 sir you have showcased amazing facts on success, successfully launch chandrayaan 3 and aditya l1 and i'm sure that the participant have enhanced their knowledge in this area sir your talk is quite motivating and encouraging for the participant as well thank you sir for sharing your wide spectrum of knowledge on chandrayaan 3 and aditya l1 i extend my special thanks to our ex president professor vp shrivastava and ex officio dr op sharma for his timely support and continuous support and encouragement i am very much thankful and grateful to our president dr seema wath for her enormous cooperation and guidance in the organization of this event i have been very much fortunate enough to work with a team of motivated and dedicated member of iept rc1 and hansraj college dr uh, poonam jain dr sk singhal dr surjan sir dr manoj kaushik dr ramnik kapoor and uh, the faculty of hansraj college uh, professor sushil kumar dr neelam jain uh, neelam singh and other members i extend my sincere thanks to uh, them for their help in organization of this event needless to say i would also like to extend a big thank you to our audience for sparing their time and patiently listening to the proceeding of the event thank you all stay safe and stay connected thank you very much thank you thank you thank you sir i think we'll uh, organize a perennial series of this uh, antarish 2023 in your future with you 
and will share each of your ex expertise on this subject. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate your gesture. It is very generous of you to spare your valuable time with us. On behalf of the entire physics fraternity, I thank you all. We appreciate everyone's presence in the event. We will see you soon with the great enthusiasm. Till then, stay home, stay safe. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. The feedback link is already shared in the chat box. Kindly fill it before leaving the session. And thank you, everyone. And uh, can we wind up the session? Thank you, everyone. Simanji, I have a request for you. Hanji, sir. वो आप जो है ना बायोसेंसर्स के ऊपर इनका एक लेक्चर जरूर करवाइएगा। I am very much interested in this biosensor, learning about the biosensors and other sensors also. Yes, sir. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Ramnik, ma'am. And the thank you very much. हाँ, नहीं नहीं सर बिल्कुल। I was just thanking Ramnik, ma'am. Thank you for the precious time. Yeah. Today I could attend, uh, you know, wholeheartedly without any commitment for from my organization. So I am thoroughly, you know, brushing up and really yeah. thank great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for spending okay. your time. My pleasure. Nice, nice to see you. Yeah. Hey, okay, sir. Uh, Shazwani sir, bilkul bio sensors pe hum magla kara lenge, or most probably offline rakhenge. Or online, the taking it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Poonam. Thank you, Yogesh. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir.